So welcome to uh, session uh, 1 of module 4. Okay. So module 4 is about uh, software testing and evolution. So before uh, having an overview of uh, what we will be experiencing in module 4, so let us have a brief recap of what we covered in module 3. Okay. So in module 3 we understood system models. So system models were used to represent the design of the system the behavior of the system, the interactions of a system using graphical models. So we used various graphical models uh, supported by UML like a context model, interaction uh, model, sequence model. Okay. So these models were used to represent the design details, behavior and interaction of different components in the system. Okay. So these models helped us uh, get more clarity, uh, more information and understanding of the uh, design of the system. So this was in module 3. So module 4 will be dealing with testing and evolution details of a software. Okay. So module 4 is all about uh, testing and evolution. So we can treat module 4 uh, uh, to be of uh, two parts, part 1 in module 4 is testing and part, part 2 is evolution. Now what exactly is testing, what exactly is evolution, why it is important, why it is significant, with and without, how it will make a difference in the software system. So the details of it, uh, we will be exploring in different dimensions in this specific module. Okay. So uh, during uh, the design and development of the software, we may perform testing. Okay. Testing is checking whether the required functions, required features are behaving as per the expectation. Checking whether the required functionality is giving you the desired output. Okay. Checking whether what the customer needs is present in the system, which we even call as validation. Okay. So all these things will be verified in testing. So testing is all about checking whether the software is performing whether it is functioning as per the expectation without any errors, without any bugs, without any flaws. Okay. The next one is evolution. So as we are aware, as we had seen in the previous modules, once the, once the software is complete, okay. so now uh, we give this software to the customer, to the client. Okay. For example, uh, Columbia Asia Hospital had uh, ordered for a patient monitoring system, automated software which, which would maintain the details of the patients and hospital staff. Okay. Now uh, they have, I mean obviously they cannot sit and develop the software because their objective is different. So they would have placed the order to a software company. The software company has uh, developed that software product. Okay. Once done with it, the software product will be given to uh, Columbia Asia Hospital. Okay. Now uh, Columbia Asia Hospital will take that software and they will start using it. Once they start using it, now it enters into the evolution, evolution stage. Okay. Now what happens during evolution? Now customer is using the software, client is using the software. Okay. When using the software, customer may experience some issues because of Presence of, presence of flaws or bugs in the software. So please note, any software product could not, I mean we cannot uh, eliminate all errors or flaws in any of the software products across the globe. Some minor errors, issues will be there which could pop up during the usage of the software. Okay, That is the client is using the software at that point of time, so uh, unknown error which could not be identified uh, while testing, so it could pop up at that point of time. Okay. Now uh, the customer is experiencing some issues, some problems because of the flaw in the system. Now what the customer will do, what the client will do? So once again, a customer cannot sit and fix that issue because they are not technically knowledgeable. So obvious thing is they will inform the company who gave them their uh, the software product Okay, in this example, in my example, Columbia Asia will inform maybe Infosys or Wipro from whom they took the software, they will inform them and uh, the software company needs to fix this issue by providing a patch. Okay. 
So this happens during evolution. Also, as we are aware, uh, technology is continuously changing. Okay, needs of the society is continuously changing. Policies of the government, okay, policies of the organization may change regularly. So based on this, new features or function may need to be integrated into the software. Okay. Now a software product is complete; it is given to the client. And now that is not the end of the story. Okay. So maybe when the client is using the software. There may be a situation where few updates, where, where few new functions may need to be added to the software. Now, once again, the same old question: Who will do this? Okay, so the client cannot sit and uh, write the code for the new functionality that needs to be added. So, obviously, so client will inform the software company that uh, they need this new feature as part of the software that needs to be updated. Okay. So company will develop it, integrate it to the existing system, and uh, now the software is updated, and that is what we call as a updating of a software, which we already experience with different softwares that we have installed in our systems. So that is all about evolution. So this is what we, you will be studying in module four. So module four is all about software testing and software evolution. in testing we try to detect errors and flaws in the systems any bugs any issues we will try to identify and we will try to fix it okay when the software is being designed when it is being developed or uh, when the product is complete but before giving to the client okay so that was, that is the story of testing now uh, once the product is complete okay now we have released the product or the software or the system to the customer the customer will start using it he may experience some issues those issues should be fixed and that will be done during evolution so the point here is so testing is like uh, before release of the software before release and evolution is uh, after release so after releasing the software to the client so this is uh, covered with the different dimensions different aspects in module 4 so this was a brief overview of what you will be studying what you will be exploring in module 4 okay now uh, the very first topic the very first topic in module 4 is the goals of software testing why we need to do testing what is our uh, aim what exactly we are trying to achieve by doing testing okay so that is what you will study under this specific section the first goal is validating okay. validating the software what is this what is validation so this was uh, discussed in module 1 where we understood whatever requirements the client has give, uh, given we need to check whether all those requirements are part of the software that we have designed and built okay client may have given some 100 requirements 200 requirements okay so all those requirements given by the client is it part of the software that we are developing or we have completed the development design and development is it there is it part of the system so that will be verified during validation now what is the benefit of this the benefit of uh, i mean uh, this specific stage is now assume a specific requirement a client has given is missing okay so we can identify it and we can add it there itself before releasing the software to the client see uh, just uh, put if you put yourself in a situation where you have completed the software by integrating all the components by providing all the interfaces you have come out with one complete package and you have given it to the client and at that point client is telling that this requirement is missing i had given this requirement uh, to be part of the software this is missing so if a client gives uh, such indications uh, once again uh, definitely the software product will not be considered to be of a good quality okay so it may damage the reputation of the company also so what the company does is it will perform what is called as validation 
where it will check whether the requirements of the client that were collected in the beginning has been incorporated in the design okay it is implemented it is part of the system okay this is the first goal the second goal of testing is okay to check whether uh, unexpected behavior okay so we should check whether uh, the software is behaving as per the expectation okay now what if it is not behaving as per the expectation so obviously the thing is the software is not satisfying the requirements of the client for example there was a web page few details were collected in the web page and when the client submit i mean clicks on the submit button all the details should be stored in the database okay it should be stored in the database this was a expected behavior okay the data that was collected using this web page should be stored uh, stored in the database this is what is expected now what if this does not happen okay the client is clicking on the submit button and uh, the page is not responding so obviously the data will not be sent to the database because only if uh, the submit button is initiated then only uh, the data will be sent now uh, these type of unexpected behaviors okay so can be uh, accurately identified during testing okay also uh, unexpected i mean any errors any flaws okay during computation during uh, generation of data during storage of data okay any unwanted interaction for example there are few components in the software component 1 should not interact with component 2 but still it is happening component 1 is interacting with component 2 that may uh, result in some undesirable consequences okay so these things can be verified any errors okay for example um, we are performing a operation okay and that operation is once again not as per the expectation okay so this can be identified so flaws so any incorrect computation so this can be detected uh, during testing but one very crucial aspect here is testing cannot uh, ensure the absence of errors meaning that using after completing with the testing you cannot claim with confidence that the software product is 100% error free so we cannot claim that but definitely it can help us identify any flaws or issues but uh, not to the extent where you can claim that uh, it is completely error free meaning that few errors few bugs may remain in the software when it is released to the client and uh, when the client starts using it those flaws errors unexpected behaviors may pop up in the system the same will be informed to by the client to the company and that is what i had mentioned as uh, evolution so things happen during software evolution okay now uh, this was the very first topic we understood why testing what is our uh, aim here what we are trying to do with software testing okay so validating the software checking for any unexpected behavior and also identifying any errors or flaws in the system so this is our major goal this is our target with respect to doing testing now uh, the next topic the next topic in uh, software testing is uh, the different stages of testing so the different uh, stages of testing now uh, we understood what is a software process okay so in software process we understood uh, how do we start with a software project okay what are the dif different intermediary steps and what is the last stage what is the final stage and as part of that uh, we acquired knowledge we gathered information that software development or software process
happens in various stages like collecting the requirements let us what exactly the client wants we will collect all those details once we are done with the requirements we enter into the design we try to establish uh, different components of the system we come out with a blueprint which component which part of the system what should be its behavior how it should interact with uh, maybe a different component what type of input it should take what type of output it should give okay so all those details all the planning of it will be done in design once we complete the design we enter into the implementation part okay so we enter into implementation and we understood what is happening during implementation okay during implementation it is all about coding okay so we start writing the code for the design that has been proposed okay as we are aware code is uh, the executable uh, form okay which is needed for deploying the software okay you cannot just complete the design and start using the software you, you need to have a hard code of it okay so once done with the implementation we enter into testing okay. so we enter into the testing part and once we are done with the testing we release the software to the client and uh, then comes the evolution part so this is uh, a typical uh, software process that we had explored in the starting modules okay so we start with collecting the requirements and we end up testing the product and releasing the software to the client and uh, the software will ever enter into the evolution stage okay now the big question here is uh, where to do the testing okay so one obvious answer is yes definitely after you complete the implementation yes you are doing the testing of the product so uh, you completed uh, the design and development and then you are doing the testing okay so this is one uh, default stage where testing is being done now the question is is it the only place where testing is done can we do testing prior to this stage prior to this phase so the answer to this question is yes it is not that uh, you should do testing only after implementation it is not that this is the default sequence you can even test for issues for flaws for unexpected behaviors in the software before entering into this stage meaning that well, then where exactly you can do it okay so you can do it in this part that is during design and implementation yes you can do it here sorry okay so prior to uh, entering into the testing part you can test for issues flaws in the system during the design itself during implementation okay so this we call as development testing so once again i'm repeating a uh, testing is to uncover the errors or bugs in the software to detect the errors or bugs it is not like you should complete the software okay and then test the product okay yes we will do it it's part of the process but you can even test for errors or issues before uh, implementation that is during design itself you can even test during implementation so you can try to understand this through this timeline so during design during implementation you can do it and that is called as development testing okay so as the name itself is indicating during development and this development incl includes uh, design and implementation uh, please do not think development means only implementation so development includes design development includes implementation okay so uh, if you test the product at these stages it is called as development testing so this is one the one of the stages where you can do software testing okay now uh, which is the second place where are the other stages where you can do the testing the second one is the default one that was just now demonstrated that was just now explained that is after the software is complete okay so this is called as release testing so release testing 
So what is release testing? So the product is complete. We have integrated all parts of the software, all components of the software, different modules of the software. We have integrated. Now it is one single package, one single software, which is ready for installation and usage. It is ready for uh, delivering it to the client. It is ready for release, but we will not give it directly. Before giving, we will perform testing, testing of the system to detect, to uncover any flaws, issues or unexpected behaviors. Okay. So that is release testing. Now uh, once uh, the release testing is complete, now the software is ready for deployment at the client side. Okay. Now it is given to the client. Now the software enters into the evolution phase as uh, previously indicated. Now the user will start using the software. Okay. So in my example, I had taken uh, the hospital management software required by Columbia Asia that was developed by a software company, maybe Infosys or Wipro. Okay. So that software was developed, okay. done with the testing, installed in Columbia Asia who is the client, they have started using it okay. and that point of time users will start using the different functions. Okay. So maybe there is a web interface for registering new patients, okay. they will open that web page, they will start entering the details of the patients like a patient name, uh, maybe previous uh, medical history of the patient. While entering those details, uh, maybe uh, the receptionist in Columbia Hesh Hospital found out that uh, the name is not being uh, saved in the database. Okay. So now a flaw was identified, an issue was identified. Now who has identified this? Okay. The user, a receptionist in Columbia Hesh Hospital has identified it. Okay. So when the software product was released to the customer, when the customer started using it, they have identified few flaws or issues with the system and that is called as the third one, the user testing. So it is the user testing, Sorry. the user testing. Now uh, who is uh, doing the testing here? So user testing is being done by the customer who is using the software, who is the client okay. and that happens during evolution. So uh, to summarize the complete discussion, we understood when software testing is done, at what stage it may be done. Okay. So software uh, development, coming out with a software product happens in different stages. So there is a starting stage. There are set of intermediary stages and there are there is a terminal stage and uh, after terminal stage there is an evolution stage. Okay, when, test, when to do testing? So that is a question here and we uh, explored the answer to this question and the answer to this question is so testing could be done at different stages. Okay, it does not like you should do the testing only after the product is complete, only after the software is complete. Okay. Yes, we will do it and that is called as release testing. You can even test for any issues in the software during design, during implementation, which we call as development testing. Now uh, the release testing has been done, now, the product is ready, it, is, it has been tested. Now we will give it to the client, the client will start using the software and at that point the client may detect something unexpected, some issue, some flaw, some bug okay? and the client may report it back to the software company. Okay. So that is user testing. Okay. So this was uh, the different stages of uh, software testing. So now we will take up uh, each and every stage and we will try to explore few more details of uh, the respective testing done at these stages. Okay. So this was the next one, the stages of uh, software testing. So the next topic is uh, as uh, indicated, we will take up each and every stage and we will try to explore few more details of uh, that specific uh, testing mechanism. 
So first we will take up uh, the development testing. So we will try to understand uh, what is happening during development testing. Okay. So as per the previous discussion uh, we understood development testing is being done when the software is being designed and implemented. Okay. At that point itself development testing is being done. Okay. Now who will do this development testing? Okay. Who will be responsible for this development testing? Now. Uh, there are different possibilities for this. It depends on the type of software, it depends on the complexity of the software, okay. It depends on the criticality of the software. Depending on all these factors, we will decide who should do development testing. Now we will explore different possibilities, okay. So the first possibility is development testing may be done by the programmer, okay, by the programmer himself. The programmer who is writing the code, who is writing the piece of code, he will only test the part of the code whether it is working properly or not. Okay. For example, uh, the programmer has developed a web page which is collecting uh, the user details like username, okay, so mobile number. We will assume this is a web page uh, which is collecting details of the patient when the patient is being registered with the hospital software. Okay. Now the programmer who has written the code for uh, developing this web page, he will only do the testing. He will check whether uh, this text box that is collecting the username is collecting the data as per the expectation. Okay. He will check whether uh, this text box, the mobile number, okay, it is collecting the data once again as per the expectation. What is the expectation here? So username, it should only be alphabets, okay. it should not overflow, mobile number, okay. so obviously alphabet sh should not be there in the mobile number, so it is only numbers, uh, maybe specific to only 10 digits, okay. so all these things will be verified by the program. <coughs> so the programmer is uh, doing the testing when coding is being done for that part of the software. Okay. What are the other possibilities? So the next possibility is uh, now in this in this scenario, in the previous scenario, uh, the programmer may be uh, overloaded with both development and testing. Okay. Instead of uh, just uh, loading the programmer with both the aspects, let us uh, try to help the programmer. Let us try to give support to the programmer. So with one more resource, so what is that? So we will form small teams of programmer and testers. We will form small groups. Okay. So uh, groups of programmers and testers. Now what is the role of a tester here? So the role of a tester here is the part of the software the piece of the software that has been uh, coded by the programmer should be checked for any flaws, issues or unexpected behavior. Okay. So now uh, you can see the programmer uh, has been released with the burden of testing or you may help the tester in doing this but anyhow his load is reduced. Okay. So you can focus on more important aspects in coding. So in the second scenario, we can see development testing being done by a small team of programmers and testers. So this is one more possibility. Now uh, what is the third possibility? So third possibility is we will have an exclusive team of testers, okay. Exclu exclusive uh, testing team. Okay. So uh, exclusive testing team which will test the parts of the software which is being coded by the programmer. Okay. So assume uh, the programmer has come out with a web page which is collecting the user details. So the programmer will not test it. 
okay so it will be given to the testing team okay whose uh, sole responsibility is checking for any issues or flaws in this web page okay so here uh, programmer is not burdened he is not overloaded with testing the software now when this scenario may be taken into consideration okay so this scenario will be taken into consideration when it is a critical system so critical system means uh, the system should not fail at any cost okay the failure of the system the failure of the software may resulted result in unwanted consequences loss of human life okay uh, maybe uh, it may be prove very costly to the client okay it may create uh, issues to the environment so these type of systems which should not fail and if it is failing it will be disastrous okay so these type of systems are called as critical systems and uh, it goes without saying that these type of systems should not have any errors should not have any flaws okay even if it is there it should be detected during de design and development and we should fix it then and there itself okay so uh, examples may be the flight control system so as we are aware so there will be a control system which will be controlling coordinating and monitoring different activities of a plane so if any small part of the system fails so we can uh, i mean imagine what will be the consequence okay a nuclear reactor okay so any small issues so it may be a disaster so these type of critical systems which should not fail at any cost so if we are developing these type of systems so we will have a exclusive testing team during development testing okay so um, now we understood who will be doing development testing who is responsible for this okay so in a nutshell it may be a programmer who is writing the code for the part of the system it may be a programmer with tester forming small teams or it may be a dedicated team testing team okay so who will be testing for any issues or errors during design and during coding okay so that was this topic about our development testing so next we will try to understand the different levels of uh, testing development i mean testing so different le levels of uh, development testing where you, where you can do okay or uh, as already mentioned uh, yes you can do it during design during uh, coding okay in which part of the code so as we are aware we understood the architecture of a software system okay it is very strategically planned carefully planned structured okay we do not find uh, things organized in a dispersed way everything is structured okay meaning that um, a software will have small modules maybe in my example you can see m1 m2 m3 okay so three modules are there these three modules may be one component component 1 like this we can have many components so component 2 component 1 may interact with component 2 using uh, different interfaces okay like this you can have hundreds of components hundreds of components so all these components integrated together will become your software okay so that will become your software or a system we understood the difference between a software a system so all these things were covered in previous modules okay now as mentioned we understood what is development testing we also understood who is doing development testing now the question is where to do the development testing at which uh, level okay is it at the innermost level which is a module or is it at a intermediary level that is a component 
or is it at the outermost level which is the system as a whole or uh, maybe collection of few components where exactly we are doing it at what level okay innermost level intermediary level or the outermost level at abstract level where you are doing the development testing okay so the answer to this question is we do development testing at all the levels where exactly so if you are uh, checking the smallest part the smallest part in a component okay so we call it as a unit testing okay. so this is one level where you will be doing development testing you are verifying for any flaws or issues in the system at the smallest level bottom most level okay in my example it's a small module so it is unit testing or maybe you you can even go into a module and you can maybe check a piece of code in that module for example module 1 had 100 lines in those 100 lines we have a for loop with 10 lines okay you can check that for loop the execution of the for loop whether it is i mean executing as per the expectation for the given input so that can also be a small unit it is not like your module itself is a small unit it depends on the context what we claim as a unit okay so this is unit testing where the smallest part in the software will be tested for any issues or flaws okay also also development testing can be done at the level of a component i can check whether complete component 2 with all modules integrated is working without any issues without any flaws as per the expectation in this case what i am doing for example uh, i want to test component 1 what is component 1 component 1 is nothing but integration of module 1 2 and 3 you give interfaces to module 1 2 3 let them start interacting let them start communicating you check whether the communication is happening as per the expectation you check whether there are any flaws whether there are any issues when the modules are interacting okay you check whether the, all the three modules as one component as a whole unit is once again behaving as per the expectation okay so that is uh, the second type of testing under development testing called as the component testing so uh, the component testing a next level so previously we were in the bottom most level the smallest part in the software now we are moving up the hierarchy that is from the bottom to the top okay so we have moved up to the component level okay next what is the next level as already explained all the components integrated becomes a software or a system as one single package okay so you may check uh, you may try to combine some set of components or maybe all the components and you may check whether there are any flaws or issues okay for example if component 1 to component 100 integrated together is your software maybe you can check component uh, 15 components out of this okay you can combine 15 components and you can check whether it is uh, working once again as per the expectation or you can combine all the components and check whether it is working as per the expectation and in this case we call it as the system testing so this is the topmost level this is the highest level in the hierarchy where the components are combined and tested so in this part of the topic we understood uh, the different levels of uh, development testing at what in which place in which part of the system you can do development testing and the answer to this question was you can start with the smallest part you can test the smallest part of uh, the system the software which we call as unit testing okay so you can test a component which is nothing but a collection of small parts integrated together okay 
or you can test the system as a whole which is nothing but integrating few components or all the components and trying to identify any issues with the system. So this, this was uh, the different levels of testing. Now we will take up uh, each testing and try to explore it in detail. Okay. So we understood there are three levels. So let us take up each and every level and try to explore uh, the different dimensions of uh, how these levels are utilized for performing the testing mechanism. So first we shall start with unit testing. So just to have a brief recap, so we are in development testing. In development testing uh, we understood uh, we can do development testing at different levels. One of the level is a unit, unit testing and uh, we are trying to explore the different dimensions of unit testing. So as already explained, unit testing will be done on the smallest part, smallest unit of the software. Okay. What can be that smallest part? Okay. So please try to have a recap. Software engineering is using the mechanism of object oriented modeling. That is what we are studying from module 1. Okay. So you are uh, planning, you are developing the system using object oriented modeling. And in object oriented modeling, it's all about classes and objects. Okay. So obviously, uh, the thing is unit testing will test the different classes and objects, which is the smallest part in the system. Okay. I mean, it is not limited to that. Even you, you can check a small interface and that can be a unit. You can check an API. Okay. So that can be part of this. Now, uh, what exactly you are doing in uh, unit testing? Okay. You may take up a small routine as a as an example I told you. You can take a for loop, okay, a small routine in your system, in your uh, software code and you can check whether it is executing all the iterations as per the expectation. Okay. So that can be a unit testing. You can test a class, for example, uh, we have a class student, we have come out with the design of this class student, we understood a class will have attributes and operations, so class is having attributes and operations. Uh, as an example, I will take few attributes like uh, name, person few operations like a student taking test, writing exam, studying. So these are the actions uh, that can be done by the students. Name and USN are the properties or characteristic of uh, characteristics of a student. So all these things were explored in module 2. Okay. Now as part of unit testing what you can do here. Now I will create an object for class student. Okay. So for student class, I will create an object, for example, Kumar. So, Kumar is a student. So, we are creating him as an object. So, what happens uh, after this is done? So, we are aware of it. So, the Kumar object will be created. Memory will be allocated. So, the, these are things that are expected when this is being done. Memory is being allocated for this object. So, whatever attributes and operations are there, with the class associated with this object. So all these attributes are carried. For example, Kumar object is associated with the student class. Student class is having these attributes like name, USN and these operations like test, study. So is it, uh, I mean, uh, are, are all these attributes and operations being carried to the Kumar object? Okay. So we will check this, we will verify it. Okay. For example, if a specific attribute is not being carried, for example, we had name, USN and mobile number. Okay. So name and USN were carried as part of Kumar object. 
when we created the Kumar object, name and USN have been taken from the class, but mobile number was not taken. So this is the issue, this is the flaw that has been detected and this needs to be fixed. Okay. So this is what uh, is done during unit testing. You can check for the classes, the B, I mean, whether the class is uh, as per the expectation. You can check the objects and its behavior. Okay. So uh, these things can happen during uh, unit testing. Okay. So uh, we will conclude this session uh, with this discussion. So in this session we understood uh, what is there in module 4. So we understood module 4 is all about testing and evolution. So we started with the goals of software testing where uh, we understood what exactly we are doing in testing, why testing is needed, why it is important, why it is significant. Without testing what will be the consequence. Okay. So then we took up uh, the stages in which you can do software testing. So we understood testing is not like it is only done after the software product is complete. Yes, we will do it. It is called as release testing, but testing can also be done during design and development. So we understood that. Okay. Also, testing can be done once the product is complete and it is given to the customer. So that also we understood. The next topic we took up was the levels of testing in development testing. So where you are doing, where exactly you are doing development testing. So it can be done at a smallest unit, the details of which were being uh, explored. We can do it at the component level or at the system level. So further detailing of this will be carried, will be taken up in the next session.